In this video, I'm going to be going over how to use forms inside of HubSpot CRM. I'll be going over what they are, how they work, how you can set them up, how you can manage them. I'll also be going into the analytics of forms. And finally, how you can embed them in your website or share them via a link. So by the end of this video, you'll be very, very familiar with forms and ready and set to start using them in your business. Welcome CRM crew. My name is Nick. Just before we get into this video, if you are signing up to HubSpot for the first time, it would be greatly appreciated if you could use my link below. It really does help the channel out. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So once you log into your HubSpot system, of course, you're going to come to the home screen. Now let's move over to our marketing area using the drop down menu. We obviously want to head over to forms. So if you're not familiar with forms, essentially this is where you can get or collect information from someone or maybe a prospect or maybe you can even use forms as tickets to support tickets as well. So obviously you put a form out and maybe you embed it in your website or maybe you have it exclusively as a landing page and you would offer in return for someone's information, maybe some a free course, for example, something along those lines. And then once you get that information, you can start nurturing that lead and then hopefully turn it into a sale for a paid course or something along those lines. But obviously the form is where we just capture the information. We can manage all our forms here and we can have as many as we like. And obviously this is part of the free version of HubSpot very kindly. We can access all of the all of these features for free and we can also analyze our forms as well. And I'll come on to that later in this video. But let's get started by creating a new form. So if we press the create a free form button in the top right hand corner here and what we can do is choose from the different form types. So we've got embedded form, standalone, pop up box, drop down banner, sliding left or sliding right box. Now I'm sure you've probably seen examples of these on various websites that you have visited and it's entirely up to you which one you'd like to use. I will mention that the standalone banner, a uh, standalone page, sorry, is literally just a page. So you wouldn't look to embed that. That's just a page you may direct advertising to, or you may just direct traffic to, depending on what you're doing, of course. Um, and the others are kind of embedded on, on a website. So I'm just going to go for the embedded form here. Press the next button in the top right hand corner. And then as you can see on the left hand side, we've got a few different template options that HubSpot has very kindly provided for us. However, I'm just going to go with our blank template. So I've selected that. Go ahead and press the start button. And then on the left hand side, this is where we can go ahead and start adding our fields from our contacts, companies or potentially tickets. Um, and essentially what we're doing is we're putting these fields on there because this is the data that we want to be collecting. OK, so on the left, we've got frequently used properties or frequently used fields. Now you can literally just drag and drop any field that you want to be collecting information on onto your form. OK, also you can use the drop down menu where it says more and make it required, which means that they have to fill out this information in order to submit the form. So again, you can collect the information and get specific on the information that you are getting in. And you might have some additional information that you're not too worried about. For example, company name, they may or may not have a company. So you could add that, but you wouldn't have it as business required. You can press the edit button and you can change some of the information. As you can see, you can make this field hidden. You can change the label name, any help text as well. The placeholder text, um, which is obviously just your company, uh, sits in like a like 50 percent opacity um, and default value as well if you would like to so you've got a few different options there and then obviously you can just delete them as well you can remove any fields from your form now we've got other elements just down here other form element uh, elements so i can't even speak We've got um, a consent checkbox. Now I'm based in the UK, so we have to abide by the policies of GDPR. So this means that whenever someone fills out a form, they have to agree to receive communications from the person who's sending it to. So agree to receive communications from CRM crew. I don't know how applicable this is in the US. Obviously, if you're emailing people in the EU, I think you might have to apply to this. I'm not too sure. The other uh, option we have is capture which is obviously spam prevention i'm sure you are all familiar with this and um, select the three buses they never really look like buses this does my head in up to you if you want to put it on your form i can't work these things out i usually give up after a while um, and then down the bottom here we've got like all of the fields for all of the different areas so we've got contact properties and these will show you all of the fields and again we've got company properties and ticket properties as well 
So I mentioned tickets at the start of this video. Um, what I would say about tickets is obviously you can use your form to capture data or people can use the form to log support tickets as well. So if you're maybe you, you've got a customer, they're using one of your products and they've got a question or a problem, you can just share this form with them or they can just have a place on the website where they can go to log a ticket to hopefully get a solution to the problem um, or a solution or an answer to the question that they have. So you can use tickets as well. Um, very clever. You create a ticket name and um, ticket description and then that goes into your tickets area of HubSpot. If you're not familiar with that, I've done another other videos to so check that out um, and that will show you and then you can walk you th you, this through the, the tickets pipeline to obviously resolve the issue or answer the question that they have I'm not going to go into that we're going to stay on the marketing side of things okay so we've, we've kind of added the two key things that I wanted for this form and then up the top here we can also create new fields now getting a little bit more complicated here this uh, these are fields that would obviously be added to like the contacts or your companies as well you can just drag and drop it and add it on. You have to add additional information as well. Um, I kind of would suggest avoiding this unless you have a little bit more knowledge on HubSpot and how that works in kind of like the background and obviously collecting information and things. It's very simple. It is just a case of dragging and dropping it on. But as you can see, we just have to type, give the object an association. So it's contact or company. Um, group, we need to select the group it's associated with. We need to give it a label as well and then a description. Once you've done all that, it's done, apart from selecting the field type. So it might be like, um, obviously because we've dragged and dropped from over here, we'll already know the field type, but you need to give it a name, things like that. So, well, a label is the name. I'm getting bogged down. I'm probably confusing you already. Let's just exit out of here. Forget I ever mentioned this, okay? And then we'll go to the follow-up area up the top here. So once we're happy with a form, we want to set the follow-up. This is obviously a follow-up email once they've submitted your form or made a submission. I would strongly recommend using this. I, If I'm ever filling out a form, I want to know that I filled out the form. I don't want to think that I got lost at the capture and uh, no one ever received my information because I couldn't spot the, spot the uh, free trees or anything like that. So if we press the create follow-up email... And then we can literally just send an email to say thank you for submitting or something along those lines. So the email, uh, edit email subscription says marketing information from the user. So whichever user you'd like, send it to. And then you can change the name. So obviously you could just say, maybe you could just change it to CRM crew if you'd like to, or your business name, or you could have it as an individual person. I always recommend having it as an individual person. It just looks a bit better. And then you just put welcome and then enter some information in the body as well so hello and maybe you are sending them a free course so this this is your link uh, to sign up to the free course and then www dot whatever okay so you could send that information you can also add an email footer as well so mine's just going to be my business address uh, you can edit that if you'd like to and once you're happy just press the save button so anytime anyone signs up to our new form they can then they will then receive this email. Uh, this is your link sign up, whatever. You can customize this as much as you like. If you are on the Marketing Hub Professional, uh, lucky you, because you can then start sending more and more emails and you can start getting a bit clever, a bit fancy with uh, your marketing and things like that. So moving on from our follow-up, we then have our options. So we can display a thank you message when they've submitted the form or we could just redirect them to another page. It's up to you. It might be worth uh, redirecting them to your actual website if it was like a landing page form or something. Otherwise, I'll just leave it as thank you for submitting the form. You've got a bit more, few more follow-up options. Send submission email notifications to the contacts only. You can tick that on or off if you would like to. Probably more applicable for tickets and things like that. And then send submission notifications to, and then you can select the team or you can just select individuals. And this is the uh, language, leave that as English. Uh, you're probably not gonna be watching this video in, in, unless you speak English. Uh, so we'll leave it there. And then we've got a few additional options down the bottom. So one, we can always create a contact for a new email address. So if someone has signed up or logged a form uh, or completed the information on the form and the email address is new, it doesn't currently exist in the HubSpot system. This is just asking if you'd like to create a new contact. That's entirely up to you, and I would strongly suggest thinking about the traffic you are directing to this form and whether you want that information going into contacts. 
If it's going to pollute your system with bad data, do not do it. Otherwise, it would be useful to have. It means you don't have to manually add anything. And anything we can automate is always good news. So that's an option. Or we can add link to reset the form. So this removes any pre-populated content on the form and creates a new contact on submission. So maybe you've got Nick at CRM Crew, but I've changed my name. Or maybe we've got the name and it just updates that information, if, you, if that makes sense. And then at the bottom, we can pre-populate contact fields with known values. So let's say we've got additional information that we know um, from HubSpot, we can pre-populate that information. So as you can see, pre-populate with known visitor information where a contact returns to your site, things like that. And then if you're using uh, tickets, there's a, a few more options for the automatic uh, ticket creation stuff, which is a very good feature, like I've said, but I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. And then up the top here, we've got style and preview. This is just customizing what our form looks like. We've got a few different label options, get a little bit fancy here. Uh, linear, round, sharp. I quite like linear. And then down the bottom on the left-hand side, we've got our style as well. We can change a few things. Font, and we can start customizing the colors. So obviously we want it to match, obviously your business and your business design. Um, so you can go ahead and do that. Now down the bottom, it just says test. We can just add a specific contact to our contact. So if I just search myself, Nick, so that's what it's gonna look like. First name and email address. And that's kind of just gives you an example of the form. That's desktop version. That's a tablet version. And that is a mobile version. A little bit glitchy on the mobile. Let's just ignore that. I'm sure that's HubSpot's fault and not ours. Um, so hopefully that has given you a good idea of what the forms are doing, how to set them up. We can also change the name at the top here. So maybe you just want to call this, um, I'll just call this example form, but obviously you can all want to relate it to what you're doing. And then press the update button, top right hand corner here. No warnings to review, thank God. If you have, you're going to have to go through and double check everything, make sure you've not done any uh, or created any issues. Now, what we can do here is two options. We can share the link or we can embed it. So like I said, we can embed it into our website, just copy the HTML and use an iframe and then just paste it into, let's say we're using WordPress or Wix or whatever you are using, or we can share the link. If we copy and paste this link, they will then be sent to the form. I'm just gonna press the preview link in new tab. The new tab is gonna open up and that is what my form is gonna look like, okay? Obviously this font can be changed. I know this looks absolutely awful, um, but it can, can be changed, so don't worry. Like I, like I uh, demonstrated earlier, if you just go to the um, the font here, you can change it. Uh, you can change it, but unfortunately, you can only change it if you're on the paid version, which is a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. So once you are happy with your form, we can just update uh, again, or we can just press out of the forms area. And now we've created our form, we can manage them, we can um, edit them, clone them, we can press the actions, detail, share, view submissions, export submissions, create translation, move to folder, and we can delete it if we would like to as well. Now, I also mentioned we had the analytics. So if we go to analyze up the top here, we can now see what the views are, the conversion rate, the submissions are, um, and we can see that, and that's just a general overview of all our forms, but we can also select all forms down the bottom here, go to that particular form, and we can see all of the information. Again, we can see the performance, the analytics, uh, all the submissions, things like that. So we see the analytics as well. So dynamically added field, excluded submissions, regular field, full name, email, what information are we getting? We can see the number of submissions we are getting as well. If I exit out of there, we can then go back. If you go to manage and just click on it, you can do the exact same thing from the same page. Hopefully that didn't confuse you. It threw me off a little bit there, but uh, it's very, very simple to do. So hopefully you are now familiar with forms in HubSpot CRM. Uh, hopefully this video has been of use to you and I will see you shortly in a moment's time. Hopefully you are all set, ready to go to start using forms, embedding them in your website, getting leads through and then managing the sales through there. Um, if you have enjoyed the video at all, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any further questions at all, you are more than welcome to either drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.